It's a very special week here on Under the Bridge. I am declaring this Dracula Week. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and you may be wondering, why Dracula Week? Is it just because of Renfield? And the answer is no, shut up. There's, there's, there's at least one other reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think it's safe to say that's like at least 90%. I, I'll give it a 70. Oh, fair, fair. 70% of the reason for Dracula Week is Renfield. Mm -hmm. In any case, hi everybody. Hello. I'm Cody, a.k.a. the Scarlet Troll. And I'm Greg, a.k.a. Greg. And we're starting this week off not with some gaming news, but with some comic news. Oh boy. Yeah. So, in August, the X-Men will be facing the Fall of X, which presumably is either the collapse of the mutant nation Krakoa or the closest thing to the collapse of the mutant nation of Krakoa that we've seen. A bunch of things are going to tie in. Iron Man's tying in. There's other stuff. In <laughs> September, though... We're going to be getting the Uncanny Spider-Man. Oh, okay. I, I don't... What's uncanny about this Spider-Man? <laughs> it's Nightcrawler in a Spider-Man suit. Is that Nightcrawler a villain? No, Nightcrawler's the blue teleporty guy. Oh, okay. I knew there was something I forgot to do, and it was look up how to spell the writer's name. <laughs> well, not spell. Per y you know what I mean. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, it's short for Simon, so okay. Okay. Yeah, it's being brought to us by writer Cy Spurrier and artist Lee Garbett. And the synopsis from Marvel.com itself says that it will be a five-issue limited series. The heart of the X-Men, Kurt has always shined as one of the most heroic and daring mutants in the franchise. Now, as the darkness of Fall of X overwhelms his fellow mutants, Nightcrawler will embrace a new role as a classic New York City bamfing hero. Is that encouraging? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Okay. Spider-Man and the X-Men have some good stuff. I like to see them interact with each other. Hmm. I'm not sure how much interacting he's going to do with Spider-Man, but it sounds like he's actually going to be going up against some Spider-Man villains, at least. So that's neat. Okay. I mean, there was a time where Black Panther wasn't Daredevil, but he was filling in for Daredevil as looking after Hell's Kitchen. Oh, like, did he take on the persona of, da of Daredevil? I, I don't think he was Daredevil. I think it was just Black Panther running around Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> But I think that's pretty damn good. I mean, fair, it's just that's... I know this is, like, not saying much of anything when it comes to comics, but that just still feels like a weird setup. Black Panther, royal king of Wakanda, just fucking around in Hell's Kitchen. Just filling in for Daredevil real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you, you don't have anything better to do, your highness? It's like, no, not really. <laughs> you would think, but I owe Daredevil a solid. Yeah, it's like, you know, I'm just sitting here, chilling. Beating up some street, street thugs in the heart of New York. <laughs> what do you mean you owe Daredevil? He helped us defeat Claw. How Wouldn't Daredevil be at more of a disadvantage against the guy with a sonic in it? Shut up. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like this idea. This is a okay. neat idea. I, hmm. I'm interested to see what happens with Krakoa. Because... Okay. It's been going for a few years now. I think it started in, like, 2019, so... That's the whole thing that crazy Dr. Xavier started, right? Mm, well, Xavier's always a little crazy. Fair. <laughs> but yes, it's it started with that storyline I read you that you didn't finish. Mm-hmm. Did I say red? Or, I meant lent. God yeah, damn I, it. I think you said red. Ah, <sighs> nap time with Cody. <laughs> Tonight we're reading... <laughs> House of X and Powers of X. <laughs> It's it's all the rage with the pre-K kids nowadays. <laughs> all right. I should read it to my niece. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to move on. Okay. <laughs> Radio Silence is making a Universal Monster movie. We don't know which one. Okay. What do I know Radio Silence from? They're the ones who made the latest Scream. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh <laughs> is that good? <laughs> it's It's a thing. The mo the reason it's most noteworthy to me, at least, is Melissa Barrera, who played Sam. Sam Carpenter. Mm -hmm. That is her name. The main character <laughs> from Scream 5 and 6. The new Sydney, essentially. Okay. I had to think about the name for a second. No, you're good. <laughs> but no, uh, she's going to be starring in it. Okay. Was it starring, or was it just... It might just be she's in it. Either way. Mm-hmm. In the vein of the studio's recent films like The Invisible Man and the upcoming Renfield, this is taken from the Deadline article, this mm. untitled monster thriller provides a unique take on legendary monster lore and will represent a fresh new direction for how to celebrate these classic characters. Hmm. 
So that begs the question, which monster is it going to be about? Are there any major monsters that haven't gotten a lot of attention yet? Uh, I mean, Creature from the Black Lagoon's due, to, due for an update. Hmm. Or maybe... No, they just did... That's right, they just did The Mummy not that long ago. I guess it was a while ago now, though, but with Tom Cruise, and it was bad. <laughs> oh, that was so bad. Mm, I mean, I I never got to see it, so I'll take your word for it. <laughs> mm. Just stopped partway through the movie to advertise the dark universe that never got farther than one movie. Oh, that is very unfortunate. <laughs> no, no, there was a whole thing where, like, they had a whole logo made for it and everything, and they put it in front of the movie. Oh, really? It was some of the craziest, most presumptuous bullshit I've ever seen. I loved it. I hated it. Oh, that's unfortunate. So, yeah, I'll take I'll take more monster movies, especially after after The Invisible Man and certainly after Renfield. <laughs> we'll get into that later, though. Oh, yes, very much so. Got some Marvel casting stuff. Okay. Mia Goff has joined the cast of Blade. Cool. We don't know who has, though. Either way, having seen quite a few things with her in it, between X, Infinity Pool, Emma, I'm excited. She's really good. Okay. What? Who do you think she would be cast as? More. I'll admit, I'm not super familiar with Blade. Okay. So I have no idea. Okay. I'm curious. So I, I didn't read the article, but I saw... A discussion about the casting, and I'm curious at this point about the move about Blade, in that how, if, well, let's just say it, how gory or extreme is it going to be? Because mm. that because that was a big takeaway from the original movies, which I do like quite a lot. In that, since there wasn't like a cinematic universe or really any of the closeness keeping tabs on things with the Marvel movies that there is now, the original Blade movies got away with a lot of violence. <laughs> oh yeah. So it, it was one of those things where it's like when it got announced, and I'm still excited for it, I was very excited, but it's like, yeah, I didn't think about that, is how they're going to handle that, because... Well, they're making Deadpool 3, so... True. Yeah, I would hope that that would follow in Deadpool's steps and also be rated, rated R, if anything. Yeah, you never know, though. I guess we'll find out. Mm-hmm. There's some rumors going around that she's playing a villain rather than what you might expect, because some people are like, oh, is she the love interest? But it seems like there's some scuttlebutt that she might be a bad guy. Which, yeah, no, she's really good at crazy. Okay. <laughs> really good. That's That sounds like fun. I never saw Infinity Pool, so that sounds encouraging, though, regardless. Well, but... I'm going to make you sit through X and Pearl at some point, once I finish <laughs> Pearl. Right. Oh, man, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, no, there's been all kinds of things rumbling around about Blade. Allegedly, Black Knight was supposed to be in it relatively prominently, and then he got cut. <laughs> which would make Eternals entirely pointless. Well, th that, but I mean, I was laughing because accidental pun. <laughs> um, oh, ha ha. But, but that's, also, <laughs> but that's <laughs> also funny because if Black Knight got cut, then yes, that makes Eternals completely... <laughs> I started laughing, I started laughing sarcastically, and now I kissed. <laughs> now I'm actually kind of laughing. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, it's like, that would be unfortunate, because, it, like you said, it would make Eternals very, like, pretty much pointless, which also makes the question of, but why, though, in that regard? Presumably because, I mean, Mahershala Ali is the one who wanted Blade to happen in the first place, so he might not have been happy with the movie not necessarily feeling like it's focusing enough on Blade. Hmm. Hard to tell, though. None of that is official. Right. So, except for him being the one who pitched Blade. Hmm, Okay. And when Mahershala Ali tells you he wants to play Blade, you say, yes, sir, Mr. Blade, sir. <laughs> Got some bigger casting news for Marvel stuff, though. Okay. Morena Baccarin and Stefan Kep Kapisic? Ke Colossus and Vanessa are back. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, no, this is a day of I'm not bothering to look up pronunciations anymore. Mm. Once was enough. <laughs> No, so yeah, that's good to know. Obviously, they're back for Deadpool 3, of course. Right. So I'm pretty sure this is going to end with Deadpool in the MCU then. Hmm. Originally, I thought that Deadpool 3 would probably just start with Deadpool lampshading the fact that it doesn't make any sense that he's suddenly been in the MCU this whole time, but just roll with it because the people with money say so. But mm -hmm. now I'm really thinking that it's going to be Something along the lines of, 
Deadpool manages to save Wolverine accident. You, you know what? Because it's also rumored that the TVA is involved in this somehow. Mm-hmm. So I feel like what it might be is they're coming after Deadpool for all the reckless time traveling he did in C- at the end of Deadpool 2. Mm. He decides, you know what? Either either they come after him after he saves Wolverine, or he saves Wolverine to help him deal with the problem. Mm-hmm. And it's going to end with Deadpool in the MCU rather than in the Fox universe. Yeah. I think the only things in the rumors that I still kind of have a hard time finding out any kind of connection with, I know you you literally just went, like, went over why it would have happened, but it's like the setup of the TVA being involved in the first place. Well, because Deadpool's been time-traveling all over the place now. Oh, fair, yeah. Yeah, remember the end of Deadpool 2? He saved, uh, he saved Vanessa, he saved Right. Peter. Oh he yeah, shot Ry- yeah. He shot Ryan Reynolds so he couldn't accept forgot- the Green Lantern script. I don't know why I forgot about that aspect. It's like then it's like I remembered him shooting Ryan Reynolds, and it's like oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no, super easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That is fair. Okay, it, I think it'd be really great considering that apparently Kang's rights were with Fox previously because is he that first- so? Yeah, he first debuted in a Fantastic Four comic. In his mm. Ramatut identity. Oh, okay. Which I guess was enough to say, no, yeah, he's uh, he's ours. But I like <laughs> the idea of the TVA explaining that we believe your actions will lead to a timeline with Kang, and Deadpool saying something like, figures they'd only use him, we've had the rights for him for how long? And they're just <laughs> using him now that they've been bought by the big guys, huh? Mm. What a fucking shit show. I could see Deadpool... At some point, along those similar lines, speaking as a joke similar to, or at least in the same like kind of thought process of the joke in the Simpsons movie of "I look at me, I'm the mascot of an evil corporation," and it's oh, still yeah. being funny but not aging well in the slightest. <laughs> oh man, you know it'd be really good. Imagine because Quantum Mania teased the Council of Kangs. Yeah, imagine mm-hmm. a Kang who is Deadpool. I was actually thinking about that. It's like, wouldn't that be something if it turns out Deadpool was, like, the king of the Fox universe? I think that's, it sounds stupid, and I'm pretty sure it would be stupid, but it'd be, it'd be an interesting thought process, if nothing else. Oh, no, I don't think he's the king of that universe. I just think it's too easy with everything that they're going for, and with, especially if the TVA is involved, it would be entirely too easy not to just have a Kang show up with, like, the mask or a full facial helmet, and then it flips open and he's wearing a Deadpool mask underneath. Mm. Wait, but don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about it. Just roll with it. Keep going. Act like I did not just replace Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> 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 and we'll get through this. <laughs> you mean Terrence Howard? Or Terrence Howard, yes, yeah, sorry. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ike Perlmutter, settle down now. <laughs> Oh, I feel bad about that one. <laughs> I feel really bad about that one. <laughs> wow. Okay. Especially since, from all like from like what I've read of, Cuba Gooding Jr. is at least not as insane as Terrence Howard. So. <laughs> oh man. That's Careful. very unfortunate. Careful. He'll sue you, and he'll use some of that new math of his to do it. Uh... The one where one plus one doesn't equal two, or something like that. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Well, I found this week's clip. <laughs> can already tell that's probably it oh god almighty this is gr- the running gag <laughs> that's unfortunate that i wasn't even unfortunate. gonna bring him up and then <laughs> <laughs> jesus and then i just made a bad joke that i feel that to set up with anyway <laughs> oh man uh so you remember how just as soon as last week i was saying oh no warner brothers isn't gonna Warner Brothers Discovery isn't going to merge HBO Max and Discovery Plus together. They realized that was a bad idea and how stupid it would be to abandon what they've already got. They're going to do it anyway, aren't they? They're doing it anyway. It's called Max. (laughs) Verstappen? (laughs) (laughs) A little inside joke for just us, I I think. I don't think it's ever really come up. No, we've brought up... He's, he's come up at least once, I think. I think I've brought up Max Verstappen at least once at this point in this show. The, the joke Max Verstop it is, is brings to my mind. <laughs> Max Verstop it. Get some Get help. Get some help. 
if 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 Max Verstappen listens to this podcast, I would be very happy and also very concerned. <laughs> I'd be confused. I would also be extremely confused. <laughs> Anyways, Max is going live May twenty third. God, what a stupid fucking call it it's... Warner Max. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds like the uh, the name of a brand of condoms, though. Hell, call it Warner Discovery Max, if you must. Uh, uh, there's no combination that makes it a good name, but I think just calling it, but Max by itself is the worst, uh, is the worst option. Maxley? <laughs> Maxley? Let's get on the streaming together, Maxley! <laughs> what a, oh, God. So anyways. This is dumb, is what it boils down to, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, no, it's basically... It, it, it's 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 basically HBO Max, but they're adding the Discovery bullshit to it. Why? I don't know. Oh, God Almighty! Yeah, so there there's three tier pricing. Okay. You can get ad supported Max Ad Light, which is nine ninety nine a month or ninety nine dollars a year. Okay. You can get Max Ad Free, which with two concurrent streams for fifteen ninety nine a month or one forty nine ninety nine a year. Jesus. And then there's Max Ultimate ad free with up to four concurrent streams for nineteen ninety nine a month or one ninety nine ninety nine a year. And I can't wait to watch this blow up in his face like so many other decisions. That's expensive. The middle one I feel like is is especially expensive for what it is. Right. Mm-hmm. What like, an absolute shit show. Yeah, like twelve, eleven or twelve ninety nine. It's like I I would expect like twelve ninety nine, not or I would not sixteen dollars. <laughs> I just, I can't wait until this doesn't work. Mm. Because you gotta imagine the Discovery Plus people, if they don't already have HBO Max, they're not gonna pay extra for all this extra shit. Yeah. That they don't care about. So it's like, okay, well, now we don't care about your programming anymore, because now you're getting even more money out of us for a bunch of content that we respectively don't give a shit about. (laughs) Nothing respectfully about it. Mm. No, they also announced some other stuff. The Harry Potter mm. series is now official. Okay. J.K. Rowling is executive producer. Mm. So, oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm expecting her to, like, produce the show, and then it's like, after each episode, it's like, so these are the changes I want to make, and since I'm saying them on Twitter, these are now our official retcons. It's like, no. <laughs> Stop making our writers' lives harder. We need a flashback in which uh, Grindelwald shits himself and then magics <laughs> it away. He's not that old. I have spoken. Mm. We're also getting a Rick and Morty anime. I hate it, but I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of drama series based on the Conjuring films. Oh, I. Oh, oh, wait. You, you're, you're still. Ta- you're talking about something else, not still Rick and Morty. <laughs> no. I was like, is that the setup of the Rick and Morty anime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Morty, you've seen the Conjuring movies, right? I don't know, Rick, yeah. they're a little too intense for me, and also, why do my voices sound different? Because sh- shut up, Morty! Oh, my one, nine day room, Morty. <laughs> Nani? Oh, dear. Uh, I, yeah, I, I see a space cowboy or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that line and that reference being made. Uh, God, I hate that. It's, it's, man, that, that really is, like, to kind of give a slight tangent, that describes half of the anime, the manga I read at this point, where it's like, I hate this, but I'm interested. <laughs> Good job. I never thought hate reading was a thing until very recently. <laughs> they also dropped an in-production teaser for The Penguin. I didn't put it on the list because it's in production, so you can still see boom mics and cameras and some of it, and it's like, mm, I don't know, this is still cool, and I'm looking forward to this, but... I feel like some of the magic's mm-hmm. gone if it's not, like, an actual, like, trailer. It's one of those weird things. I always, en- I personally always enjoy the behind-the-scenes stuff, because I always find the production of anything, whether it be, like, m- movies, games, or what have you, fascinating. But I never want to see that before the actual product has come out. Right. Like, it's usually a thing of, like, I- I'll love to see that, like, after I've experienced it, because then it's like, okay, so how did they make this, or how did they get away with this? It's like, no, don't take the magic right away, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to pirate the penguin, I guess, because I am not getting Max. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> it's... God, that's such a bad name. <laughs> it's so... You had so many options! You had so many options. Especially just... when... You could have just kept HBO Max! Yeah. 
You could have called it HBO Max Plus, even. Mm Mm-hmm. Just, they're all done. They're all done. It's going to blow up in their face eventually. As much as I hate to say it, because it'll affect the people who are just like, dude, I just work here. I have no control over these people's dumb decisions. You know what? That's right. That's right. I hope it works out for everybody on the lower end. It won't, because it never does. It never does, but, yeah. Hey, you know what? Let's throw some good DC news in there. Oh, boy. Well, some good Warner Brothers news, because it's DC news. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it's James Gunn's DC news. Okay. (laughs) All right. Encouraging, I think. (laughs) We now have the cast for the animated Creature Commando series, which is confirmed to be set to premiere in 2024. Okay. Yeah, Frank Grillo is going to be Rick Flagg Sr., Mm. David Harbour is Eric Frankenstein. Okay. Indira Varma is the Bride of Frankenstein. Alan Tudyk is Dr. Phosphorus. Okay. Maria Bakalova is playing Ilana Rostovic, who doesn't seem to be a character from the comics. Oh, so she's original to the series then? Yeah. Zoe Chow is Nina Mazursky. She's the she's the fish lady. And Sean Gunn is going to be both G.I. Robot and Weasel. Huh. Alrighty. And also, Steve Aggie is returning as John Economos, the warden of Belle Reeve. Hmm. Also, the dye beard guy from Peacemaker. Oh, okay. I figured that might make him more recognizable. Yeah, alrighty. I will say, I'm a little bit taken aback at Sean Gunn being both G.I. Robot and Weasel, considering that earlier when the Aquaman Lobo rumors were coming around, James Gunn was quick to say, no, people were playing one character. So... I don't know about that, Hmm. unless it's one character is maybe such a bit part that it doesn't matter, like maybe G.I. Robot is a fake-out or something, Hmm. or maybe Weasel's the fake-out and he just dies again. That, I I could see that more so That'd be really funny, actually. Yeah, I could see that more than them making a, using G.I. Robot as a fake-out. He's not a werewolf, right? He's a weasel and he's harmless. (laughs) I mean, he's not harmless, he's killed 27 children. (laughs) But he's agreed, we're we're pretty sure to be here. Right. God, that movie was so good and I can't wait for it. (laughs) Shall we trailer time? Indeed. Alright. You know what, in the spirit of Dracula Week, let's put The Last Voyage of the Demeter first. (laughs) I never thought I'd be annoyed by the use of the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, first time? (laughs) You saw Black Adam. I did see Black Adam, and I was thinking about that after the trailer. It's like, huh, I feel like it's like I see, I've heard Smashing Pumpkins and like so many different things, like as, like just across my entire life. But I think this is the first time I've actually been annoyed by the use of the song, even though I am blinking on the name of the song right now. Bullet with I, Butterfly Wings. Yeah, I was annoyed just because they were basically focusing hard on the whole, the one lyric of... The world is a vampire. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I made such a face. He did. He made a he made a face, ladies and gentlemen. That was we great. saw it in front of Redfield, and it was just a look of <laughs> pure disgust. It's like the devil is here, and his favorite band is is the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> no, because otherwise this trailer looks very good, sufficiently moody, sufficiently creepy. Mm -hmm. dark, dour, disturbing, whatever you want to call it. It's just really fucking unfortunate that it fell prey to the let's play a moody cover version of a pop song or a pop punk song or what the fuck is, what the fuck is (laughs) Smashing Pumpkins? Uh, I would would probably lean towards punk if I had to, if I had to guess. They're a rock band according to a quick fill-in. Yeah, uh, alternative Alternative rock. rock, hard rock, shoegaze. Psychedelic rock, gothic rock, rock. Okay, so they're not, they're not what is pop or punk. But you, you know what? This is not a topic for this podcast. <laughs> Some genre yeah. of indie and alternative rock characterized by its ethereal mixture of obscured vocals, guitar distortion and effects, feedback, and overwhelming volume. Okay. Presumably, I assume it means when you get high on acid and stare at your shoes. Okay. That might be something that I listen to later. Hmm. Although that might result of me going down the the a uh, new genre rabbit hole, hole like I did with Japanese rap music. But no, this seems sufficiently creepy, especially you know they all die. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no way they survive. <laughs> Cuz it's They're based fucked. on one single chapter in the Dracula book. Yeah, no, and it's like oh wait, it is. 
Yeah. Oh God. Then yeah, this it's a it's the closest description I can think of or comparison or anything. It was like, all right. So in Sicily, it's like, all right. So we're in an Obi Wan situation, or it's like, oh, it's based on one chapter of the story of Dracula. I wonder how it turns out for Dracula. <laughs> I bet Dracula doesn't make it. Mm. <laughs> one Movie of, ends. Yeah, <laughs> what if though? Yeah, indeed. Can you even imagine? Mm. Oh, that'd be crazy. That would be pretty nice. I wouldn't bet on it, though. <laughs> it's gonna be a whole huge downer ending. Right. Maybe they think they've killed him, but he survived as, like, one single rat or something. It, oh, I want to I want to make a reference to Renfield, but it's also a spoiler, so I'm not Ah, uh, yeah. To. Don't do that. <laughs> Save that for later. Indeed. <laughs> My word. Mm. No, I'm looking forward to this one. Mm, it looks interesting, I'll give it that. I'm not totally sold on it just yet myself, honestly. I like that the Dracula design is kind of more Nosferatu or Lockean. Mm -hmm. Less, uh, a little less Nicolas Cage. <laughs> but what a magnificent, what a magnificent Dracula he We'll get into it later. We'll get into it later, ladies and gents. Point is, I'm gonna see this for sure. We also got a tiny little baby teaser for the Continental. The John Wick prequel spinoff. Yeah. <laughs> Set in, like, 1970s New York, so... Which they're they're sure to tell you in the trailer. Yes. <laughs> it. I mean, God. It's it's weird to say, because it's... This one's weird to me, because it's one of those things where it's like, I should be interested in this, but for some reason it doesn't completely grab me. I do very much get the feeling that they are very heavily... I'm sure it's going to be fine, but I get the feeling that they are very heavily relying on the subtext of from the world of John Wick to pull people into it. Oh, yeah. yeah Especially because, so. I don't know, the choreography didn't grab me all that much. Mm hmm So, for me, that's kind of a red flag. But, hey, you know, it's only a three-part series, so if I watch it and I don't like it, what's the worst that can happen, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, shoot, I, I act, it's only going to be on Peacock, but I actually have Peacock because I've got it to make it easier to watch racing this year so if anything we can just both watch it on mine <laughs> what I, al I, I almost made a joke because i have it too but it's free so i <laughs> almost made the obvious joke <laughs> and uh, you can understand why i didn't do it yes and that's probably a good thing overall if i uh, had to guess <laughs> no this looks all right though i'm curious how they're gonna how it's gonna work without the presumably without the bulletproof suits, mm -hmm. and all the other weird like I I assume we're still gonna get the coins and we're still gonna have the 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 weaponers and what have you, but yeah, maybe some high table bullshit. Uh, I mean, I'm also kind of looking over the cast list for it as well. I do not know the majority of these actors and actresses. Although, however, Mel Gibson is in it. So. Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, it looks alright. I'll agree to that. So, I assume you at least watched Talk to Me. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Instant bad juju. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure is just the MO of the movie regardless, but it's like, it's really cool, but it's also the thing where it's just like, oh, so many people are gonna die. My initial re reaction to that was when they showed the A24 logo and the two was the hand. Ugh, it's like, nope, mm, mm Which is really cool, but my brain immediately went, oh, s all these people are about to die. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, it looks very much like a Ouija board movie, just with a hand for some reason. Mm-hmm. Which, hey, whatever. <laughs> it seems like the premise is, lady wants to talk to her dead mom, and things go awful. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks... I don't know, it looks neat, but it also, again, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I can tell from the setup, it's like, alright, things are going to get real ape shit, and... There's a kangaroo for some reason? Is this an Aust This movie's Australian. Oh, yeah, that'd be why. Yeah, no, I actually, like, like searched it up real quick, because when, when you said that, it's like, yeah, now I think about it, they sound, the actors and actresses sounded a little Australian, quick look. Oh, this movie's from Australia. Yep, that makes sense. In fact, it actually premiered, well, it premiered um, at the Adelaide F Film Festival last year. Mm. So, but this is going to be like a full release, which is, well, I guess, why A24 has picked it up. 
That's what I get for basing things on narrow-minded cultural assumptions. <laughs> That's a little Ace Attorney joke. <laughs> for those in the know. Um, huh. Really funny joke, too. Makes me laugh every time. I'm not just saying that. Clap, clap, clap. clap slap, clap, slap, slap. <laughs> this is another one for for me. I'm like, this, this looks okay. <laughs> I think it looks a little bit better than okay. It looks positively spoopy to me. Oh, yes. Very much so. I, I like the idea of, oh, yeah, we opened a door, and then we left it open, and now bad things are coming through. Mm, hence the Ouija board feeling. Yep. Because that's definitely... It, I'm curious how the hand is supposed to work, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's It is like, very much one of those movies where you can absolutely... You're just basically screaming at the screen, don't do it. Yeah, no. You got your hands hidden be- in front of your face, don't do it. Yeah, it's like, the hands want more hands. Don't put your hands in front of your face. <laughs> or you'll catch those hands. Yeah. <laughs> These hands are rated E for everyone. <laughs> uh. Which just leaves the main event, the big one. Mm-hmm. At least I think. Yes. We finally got a teaser trailer for the Marvels. I feel conflicted about this one. Really? Yes, because on the one hand, they they got me in very good by using Intergalactic by the Beastie Boys. <laughs> When it started and it was intergalactic, I was like, okay, we've already got ten points, like, in the first five seconds. I don't know. Kamala Khan kind of make Kamala Khan kind of makes it for me. See, the thing is, is that she does and she doesn't for me. Really? And and that's the thing I'm conflicted about. Granted, I still I still have not seen any of Miss Marvel, so I'm probably oh missing a lot for her. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> I don't have Disney+. Plus. It's half and- of a really good show, Greg. Watch it. <laughs> it's, it's half of a really good show. <laughs> It's half a really good show, and then the half that I don't think is very good apparently resonates with the people it's meant to resonate with. So you know Mm. what? I'm not going to knock it too hard. I'm just going to say, it's not for me. I like the Jersey Superheroics better. Fair. I don't know. I definitely, I want to go see it. I'm definitely interested in it. But I don't think it's grabbed me as hard from the get-go as previous Marvel movies. No, that's Um. fair. I'm especially, I'm especially cautious after Quantumania. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, considering that the focus is on the three of them, including, I guess, at some point a fight, which I'm going to call it. Some, I'm going to call it. Don't know how. Will hopefully be proven wrong. Some thing, something, something. Mind control is why they're fighting each other. What? Nothing. Where'd you get they're fighting each other. Isn't that the bit where it's like they're sh- they're like trying to attack each other? Um, in like the last little bit of the trailer. No, that's them attacking another person. Oh. Oh, okay. But All no, right. I can see your confusion because it it does look a little bit like Brie Larson. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then Captain Marvel attacks her, so... Mm. Can't be her. Yeah, no. Plus, it looks like she's got the other bracelet. Right. Which you don't know anything about because you haven't seen Miss Marvel, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm bad at this. <laughs> uh, well, we're gonna have to catch you up before November, I guess. Yeah, that's for sure. One thing I do like... One thing I really mm. like about this, the idea of they switch places whenever one of them uses their powers, mm-hmm. that's a really good justification for why they're keeping Kamala around with them. Because otherwise, bringing her along would be horrifically irresponsible. Mm-hmm. But with the explanation of their powers are entangled, and therefore they could swap at any time, it makes sense, yeah, keep her in eyesight, because otherwise... If she's still on Earth, then we're on the other side of the galaxy, and we switch with her. She's suddenly in danger, and we're not getting back straight away. I will say one one bit in the trailer that I did really like, because I was just like, yeah, you know what, that's real shit, is when she teleports to wherever Captain Marvel was, and she ends up next to the cat, and she just watches the cat eat two dudes, and she's like, oh my god! It's like, yeah, no, that's... freaking out. It's like, that's real shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> It's like, I don't think I could have reacted to that any better, so... <laughs> also, Iman Vellani is great. She's the one who keeps arguing with Kevin Feige. That's, that's the actress for Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. She's the one who keeps arguing with Kevin Feige about nerd shit like the MCU is not Earth-616. <laughs> <laughs> well, Which, yeah, no, respect. Yeah, because it's not. <laughs> yeah, but try telling, try telling the guy who's in charge of the whole thing that. It's literally, oh my god, I'm not even big into Marvel and that pisses me off as far as the whole comics aspect. It's like, no, they literally gave it a number, 
for this very reason that's different from all the others. Why the fuck is that even an argument? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Now, the real curious thing is that scene where it looks like everybody is dancing. Mm. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, it's like, okay, I'll be honest, that was one of the bits that kind of drew me in a little bit. Because, like, okay, you know what? I could go for some spontaneous Bollywood. At least a little extra, since we got a little bit of an internals, so. Yeah, no, that was great. <laughs> and also, the bit with all the kittens. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> I have a theory. Mm-hmm. Despite what you may think, I don't think that's an army of Florkins. Do you think those are actual kittens? I think those are actual kittens. I think maybe Kamala gets the idea, hey, let's just set a bunch of kittens loose. Everybody mm. will think they're Florkins and freak out. Okay. That is what I think. I can see that, because when I saw that, I was just like, oh, bad juju. Bad juju. <laughs> Probably real cats. Mm. I don't know, though. Could very well be a bunch of Florkins. Maybe it's Goose's family. <laughs> No, I'm looking forward to this. I I like the first Captain Marvel well enough, and this doesn't feel like it's a huge departure from what I liked about that one, which is wacky space stuff, but also some stuff on Earth. Mm -hmm. There was something else, but I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> oh well. Let's go to box office. Alrighty. Did we see the highest grossing movie of this weekend domestically? We did last week. Yeah, as I say, probably not. <laughs> it's probably still not the Super Mario week. Brothers movie. Hmm. Took in eighty-seven million domestically this weekend. It's currently sitting at three hundred forty-seven point eight million dollars in domestic total and six hundred seventy-seven point nine million dollars worldwide. Interestingly, okay. that makes it the highest-grossing video game adaptation of all time. Okay. You'll never guess what it beat out. Uh, Uncharted. No. The nineteen ninety Mario Brothers movie. You get one more. Angry Birds. No. Okay, what was it? It was Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> a, co a movie that I completely forgot existed. <laughs> Same. No, but it did pretty damn well domestically. Or not okay. domestically, it did pretty damn well everywhere else. That's the one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the international budget was, or box office was good, so. Mm. Alright. Yeah. It's also the highest grossing movie of this year so far. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it knocked Ant-Man and the Wasp clean off its perch like that. I mean, to be fair, given the momentum in the first weekend, I could, I could understand that. Oh, yeah. To be fair, though, Ant-Man came in with a strong weekend mm. opening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it's still a little surprising. Mm. Second place... I can't fucking believe this one. Second place <laughs> was the Pope's Exorcist. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, no, For that's... real? Yeah, no, 100%. Okay. Took in $9.1 million domestically and is sitting at $36.5 million worldwide against an $18 million budget, so... What the fuck? So it's actually... So it's at minimum completely broken even. Basically. Th that's insane. <laughs> oh, you know the really funny thing? I'm not going to review this movie in depth. I did see it this weekend. I also saw Mafia Mama, but we're mostly we're, we're just going to talk about Renfield. But I I made a tweet about it so that, you know, the Twitter overlords would not remove my podcast posts for commercially motivated <laughs> spam as they mm. do. Mm. And the tweet was Saw the Pope's Exorcist, and for most of the movie, it's a relatively predictable, safe, demonic possession movie, in as much as those exist. And then, like, the final 15 minutes just devolves into absolute lunacy, and I had a great time watching it and laughing. <laughs> but then, and bear in mind, I didn't use hashtags, I didn't use anything. That was just straight text. Mm -hmm. One of the producers <laughs> replied to it. Oh, boy. Yeah, Jeff Katz. At least, I assume it's his. It's got the check mark, which of course means it can't possibly be anybody else, because verification is a foolproof method that doesn't... Fuck, I can't even... <laughs> can't even, can't even pretend. Mm. But the reply was, as long as you're entertained, it works for me. Thanks so much for coming out to the theater to give us a look. And if it wasn't... If, if it had come from anyone other than a producer, I might have felt a little bad. I think I might have mentioned this previously, but in last weekend's NASCAR race... 
there was a press conference after one of the races and a reporter asked a driver, it's like, hey, so, you know, all these fans come out and whatnot. What do you think about the guy who was sitting in the grandstand giving you the double bird every uh- lap throughout the entire race? And the driver's just like, you know what, man? He's up there. He paid for tickets. He's making noise and he's supporting the sport. And that's all I could ask for. <laughs> hey, fair. Fair enough. And also another quick caveat. I saw a post on the picture subreddit a couple guys took it went to the movie theater to see the pope's exorcist and they were in the theater by themselves until a couple other priests came into the theater to also watch the movie and they took a picture with that with of the two guys with the priest in front of the poster for the movie and someone asked you know what did they say about it and they said like one of them thought it was a total comedy so yeah (laughs) <laughs> I don't think it becomes a comedy until the end. Anyways, that's not what this is about. Yeah, but it's like, well, that's, that's, for me, it was like, I think that's all I need to really know about this movie. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Third place, John Wick Chapter 4. <laughs> <laughs> this is not encouraging for what we saw. <laughs> no, $7.9 million domestically this weekend for a $160.1 million domestic total. It's currently sitting at $349.7 million worldwide. Okay. So good for it. Fourth place was Redfield. How? (laughs) $7.77 million domestic weekend and in total for a $10 million worldwide total. That is so close to the boogie number. (laughs) That is actually kind of infuriating because that would have been even funnier considering what the movie is. You know, if it had just made $1.11 million less. (laughs) It's less. (laughs) But I'm glad it didn't because it's got a $65 million budget. So oh oh, they're they're they might be a tad fucked. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. And in fifth place, Air Courting a Legend. Okay. Seven point seven two million dollars domestically this weekend for a thirty three point two million dollar domestic total. It's sitting at fifty four million dollars worldwide on a budget somewhere between seventy to ninety million. Okay, that one's also gonna have a hard time then too. Yeah, but that was originally supposed to be an Amazon Studios or an Amazon Prime release, so mm, you gotta imagine they're happy with any millions. <laughs> That's fair. But also, yeah. Mm. Also, I can't believe the world we live in where a movie's budget could be somewhere between 70 and 90 million. I can't believe the world we live in where a movie's budget would be somewhere between 70 and 90 million and no one's like, yeah, but we know exactly how much it is. Right? The <laughs> fact that we don't know exactly how much and it could be somewhere in, in that range of $20 million. Like, what the fuck? Where did the extra 20 go? Bugatti's for, for, for all the higher-ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're probably right. Mm. So, yeah, that's kind of disappointing for Renfield because... I had a blast at this movie. This movie was a very good time, and we're going to talk about it. Yeah, it's good, or at least it, it's funny. Yeah, it's very fun. <laughs> it, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but again, and you know, it, I'm not sure if it'll go down as one of my favorite movies of the year. It might make the top ten, I don't know, we'll see, there's a lot of stuff still to come. But mm-hmm. I definitely don't regret putting it on my most anticipated list now, because you know what? I was looking forward to Nick Cage's Dracula, and I honestly got more Nick Cage's Dracula than I could have possibly imagined. <laughs> it's a spoiler, but you saying that reminded me of the insanely well thought out joke that took me way too long to realize. <laughs> that was depressing. <laughs> yeah. Because what followed from that was just full like full unfiltered unrestricted nicolas cage <laughs> just a full display of how much this man loves acting which is completely inverse to how absolutely absurd he can he can be <laughs> so the premise of this movie such as mm-hmm. it is is that renfield has been serving dracula for uh, what is it decades now yes they're even in the original f- or or nope nope's going to stop there <laughs> <laughs> Very good, I'm proud of you for not. Yeah, there's just... Oh God, this is, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> there is. But in the process of constantly having to pack up and flee because every time Dracula gets to full power, he goes on a absolute bloodbender rampage and starts just <laughs> trying to drink the mortals and just summoning monster hunters to their door. Mm-hmm. Renfield's kind of tired of all that, and he starts to think to himself, could I be something else? Mm-hmm. And, then he, and then he runs into Aquafina's 
traffic cop character, Rebecca, and he starts to realize, you know what, maybe I could be more than that. Mm -hmm. And then things go horribly wrong. They go horribly wrong, horrifically quickly. <laughs> but yeah, I like this. This is a really funny movie. This is a really funny movie. It's funny. It's gnarly as hell when it comes to the kills. It's gnarly, but not usually in a way where you can't look at it. Yeah, although I think a big portion of that is because, for, for those of you who can't handle gore, like, make no mistake, the movie is very gory. But I don't think it's a spoiler to to know that it's very incredibly easy to tell fake gore. It's cheap gore. It is very cheap gore. So much so that it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's... It doesn't completely, like, take you away. With, I think, one particular exception. But otherwise, it's cheap and it's fake and it's very clear. And for that, I think it makes it at least easier overall to watch in that regard. I have a joke. (laughs) <laughs> what is your joke? If you came into this movie expecting grade A gore, you're not gonna get it. It's more like E gore. Uh... <laughs> uh, even got like the classic Ram Stoker esque laugh going there. Uh... <laughs> uh, no, oh, okay, that's another thing I want to talk about. That uh, I guess it's a minor spoiler, but I'm not gonna get into that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, um, the gore is pretty cheap. The choreography is a little hard to follow sometimes, mm-hmm. presumably because they want to make it, like, all the all the camera cuts make it hard to follow what's going on, but the camera cuts are there so you don't have to spend too much on effects to make it look convincing. Yeah, that was actually something I was thinking about, like, at least in, with a lot of the fights in the movie, because, like, the fights themselves, I felt like, were actually pretty good. But the wave with the camera cuts and the edit kind of made it a bit jarring to, like, keep track of. The actual, like, movements and actions from the actors themselves were, were, were good. But, yeah. But the cuts themselves made it, like, a little bit tough to, to, keep, to keep the flow going. Right. Yeah, like, again, to kind of reiterate, Nicolas Cage is on a full acting bender in this movie. <laughs> oh, so good. And it's so fun to watch. Like, he is just... After, especially in the last few years, I've read a lot more of, like, his interviews. I've read a couple question and answers he's done. And I've, like, watched a couple interviews as well, like, on YouTube. And it is clear as day that this man just loves it. Like, it is literally what he lives for. I would say it is, the it is like, his number one love more than anything else in the world besides actual family, probably. The blood is uh, the life, Mr. Redfield. Yes. And to that end, I've realized in, in that... That the movies that he clear as day is like has the most fun being an actor are completely inverse to how absurd he is as an actor. So it's like, if he's being more insane, that means he's having a really good time, even if it comes off kind of bad. And, and in boy, this one, he's having a great time. <laughs> he is Dracula dead and loving it. Wow. Yeah, like, oh god, there's there's just so many bits. Even, like, really small ones, too. There's one thing where he's, like, um, where he, like, he's, like, waiting for something to happen, and with the crazy-ass evil smile, he just raises his eyebrows three times in a row successfully, <laughs> successively, and it's just hilarious. <laughs> it's so funny. He's and mugging then... so much that it's just... He is the most con- like confident Insano Boingo monster serial killer I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Which sounds like an overly narrow superlative, but it's very high praise, we assure you. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, Nicholas... Why am I blinking on his last Holt. name? Nicholas Holt. Nicholas Holt also kills it as Redfield. No, it does a really good job. He's a... Honestly, I could see... If you just want to do a straight remake of Dracula, just, like, shot for shot, just with new actors, you could 100% do Nicolas Cage as that Dracula, and mm-hmm. do Nicholas Holt standing in at for Dwight Fry as Renfield. Yeah, no, 100%. No, he's great. He's great in, like, the, like just in, in how he is, because it's like, he's great as an actor, his exposition, he is funny as fuck. <laughs> so good. We can obviously get into it more in spoilers when we can reveal some lines, but... Yeah, but he he has so many great lines. And also just the way he carries himself and the way that he very convincingly goes through 
Renfield's problems and his fears and all that. It's all convincing at the very end. It's like, yeah, this is, I can see a person in this situation reacting the way that he does. <laughs> yeah. If I had to pick a thing, it's not that Aquafina is bad because she's quite good in the role. Mm hmm. But the subplot revolving around her, even though mm. it ties into the main plot later, feels kind of unnecessary. Uh, I mean, yes and no, but I think it's one of those things where it feels unnecessary, but I also feel like it's there. It's there more so not so much for her character, but to also highlight the bullshit around her character. Yeah. And to make the, that said bullshit a lot more obvious so people pay better attention to it. I actually enjoyed Aquafina in this, primarily because it's one of those things where it's like, I, with how her character goes and how she carries herself and the badass shit that her character does, Aquafina is not one of the actresses I would have picked to play this kind of role. But I'm glad that they did because of the fact that she's not the kind of actress I would have picked to play these role, this role. You know what? Actually thinking about it, you're right. I can see where it was necessary to set up some particular things. So, yeah, you know what? A uh, complaint retracted there. Yeah. Be yeah, and, and I say that especially because the bullshit surrounding her character is infuriating. It's, so, <laughs> it's just, if it hadn't gone where it ended up going, I would have said minus points. Yeah. <laughs> what else? What else? Ben Schwartz as Teddy Lobo <laughs> did not expect Sonic the Hedgehog. It, you know what's unfortunate is that Ben Schwartz does a really good job, but there are certain points where his voice in um his inflection happens in a way that it's like, okay, and now it's Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> saying this shit. <laughs> or doing this horrible shit. Because like he plays a mob boss, a very Oddly passive, but very violent mob boss at the same time. He's not really is... especially violent himself. Yeah, but there's definitely bits where I'm just like, I had to, it's like, it's not his fault at all, I would say. But it is like, there are certain bits where it's just like, alright, that's Sonic the Hedgehog trying to be threatening, and that makes this very funny. <laughs> and or Dewey Duck from the new DuckTales. Oh, I didn't know he was doing that as well. Yeah. I oh, mean, it's okay. been over for a few years, but... Oh, fair. Yeah, no, he was also Dewey. <laughs> Great, now I've just got, how are you not dead? <laughs> I have no idea! <laughs> My Ben Schwartz impression is terrible, but... <laughs> I think it got the point across. Yeah. Hmm. We got anything else that isn't really a spoiler? I feel like sometimes the line between what's a spoiler and what isn't can be a little blurry, but for comedies in particular, I feel like really good lines count as spoilers, because if yeah. you're going to see a comedy, you're going to go see it to be entertained and have some laughs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I would say, in that aspect, I can't think of anything else. Alright, in that case, uh, definitely go see it, because it deserves to do better than it's doing. Yes, 100%. So with that being said, if you don't want spoilers for Renfield, make sure to click away in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so one thing about this movie that really pisses me off is people seem to know who Dracula is. Mm. They are familiar with him. But <laughs> okay. right at the start of the movie when Redfield's explaining his origin, which is done pretty fucking funnily. Yeah, yeah it's done excellently. Like, very unexpectedly good. <laughs> they have footage that's basically a send-up to the original 1931 Dracula, but with Nicolas Cage standing in for Bela Lugosi <laughs> and Nicholas Holt standing in for Dwight Fry <laughs> as Renfield. And it's really fucking funny, but it also implies that that means a 1931 movie happened, and this is just the Universal Monsters universe again. Mm -hmm. But if that's the case, I don't know, I feel like Dracula should be dead? And if he's okay. not dead, why do people know who he is? Yeah. Because they're all familiar with his name once it's mentioned. And also, mm -hmm. if they're familiar with Dracula, how come nobody raises their eyebrow at the name Renfield? <laughs> because Renfield's there all the time wherever Dracula is. Yeah. So, but I think the only people who knew who Renfield was at that point were the the two, like the monster hunter and the priest who were trying to capture Dracula in the beginning of the movie. True. But if they know, that means other people should know, I feel. Yeah, like 100%. Also, huh. interestingly, this is one example where there are a couple of lines that are in the trailer that aren't in the movie. 
There, I feel like there was a lot that got cut from the movie that was shown in the trailers. There was at least two. The ones that stuck out to me was the, you have the word of the most trustworthy institution on the planet, the Catholic Church. <laughs> Followed by Nicholas Holt's face of, really, dude? <laughs> Not in the movie. Not in the movie. Instead, the priest just gets exploded by Dracula anyway. Mm-hmm. And also, when Aquafina asks about cutting a guy's hand off with a serving tray, instead of saying it's all in the wrist, he goes, it must be the adrenaline. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there was also another one later on when Renfield is explaining the situation to Aquafina. Um, and she goes, in, in the trailer, she goes, you're the guy who brings the villain's postmates. But was that not in? I don't believe so. Huh. Now I have to go see it again just to see. Yeah. <laughs> um, They've got decent chemistry. Not the greatest, but... they. Yeah, it's. See, I think their chemistry makes sense for the situations that they find themselves in, especially in the second half of the movie. Uh <laughs> it also fits that it feels like Sorry. Renfield. No, it's fine. Hmm. It also fits that it feels like Renfield is more attached to her because it's established that he has a problem with codependent relationships. Yeah. So that actually works in its favor. That to me, at least, it feels a little one sided. Mm-hmm. But man, so, so okay, so to get in the spoilers of the plot. Yes. Aquafina's character is trying to investigate Ben Schwartz's character and his family's criminal ties because they got her dad killed. Turns out her whole department is fucking corrupt and working for Ben Schwartz's mom who runs the entire thing. And they end up throwing their lot in with Dracula because Dracula decides, you know what? It's not good enough to just keep hiding from the world. I want to take it over entirely, but I need an army. And... Ben Schwartz is just like, yeah, we can get you an army. We can, we can, we can do that. That could be done. <laughs> are you happy or are you going to fuck me up? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and that's a completely reasonable reaction, too. Especially when Dracula, like when Nick Cage reaches out to grab his, his shoulder. And he's like, ha ha ha. And, and Ben Schwartz just screams a little bit before. <laughs> I thought he was um, going to die that. right there, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah I thought he was dead for, dead for sure. <laughs> And then he ends up making Teddy and some of the other guys his familiars, which, okay, that's, I think, the point where the choreography really struggles and where the, you can really see the strings. When mm -hmm. Renfield has to fight a bunch of other people who also have powers, that's when the cuts get way worse. Yeah. Yeah, that fight was a little, a little too much. Yeah, that wasn't a great um, one for choreography. For me, I think the one that kind of held up in terms of choreography was at least kind of the initial bar fight oh that was very good that was very good and that kind of solidified my thought process of i like that they're using aquafina for this role because given the the way the movie is and all of that and how aquafina's character is set up i was expecting to be kind of like moderately because of how aggro she is especially moderately kind of like bumbling idiot and it's like no she she fully holds it fully competent excellent fucking shot makes shots that it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and again, I think that part in particular was like, yeah, Aquafi for the roles I've seen her in, not the kind of thing I would expect her to like fully get into. But yeah, she does great with that. Um, even though there are definitely times where her trigger p discipline pull pisses me off. <laughs> the bit where she like uses her gun to prop herself up after getting wounded is like, take your no, trigger. No. Take yeah, it's like, I was going like, please stop. <laughs> It's like, please take your finger off the trigger there. But of course, her her waving the gun around does lend itself to one of the best moments, which is, of course, when Renfield is explaining that he works for Dracula. And when she yeah. clarifies Count Dracula, he just replies with the smarmiest President Dracula. And then she just points her gun right at him. And like, instantly just puts the gun up. It's like, okay, yes, Count Dracula. And it's like... <laughs> and it's just... Everything about that scene was great, not just because of the line, but because of the overall tone, because it is him explaining everything, and it's dead silent, there's no music or anything, and she is in a clear state of disbelief, and he's like, he's just like, so like, quietly like, I work for Dracula. She's like, Dracula, yes. As in Count Dracula, he's like, well, actually, like, President Dracula immediately pulls up her gun. Don't even and hesitate. Yes, like, not I'm even so a moment. I'm so sick of your shit right now. <laughs> 
And the unfortunate thing about that is that I can see any of us, like between you and me and our respect and our all of our friends, that is a situation that that I could see any of us doing and it playing out exactly like that. Like, it doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> it's like, all of us would make that joke, and then the other person would immediately hold us at gunpoint yep. <laughs> for making that joke. How fucking dare you? <laughs> If, if we're talking about just, like, excellent jokes in this movie. The fuck bit Carol, where... I hate her too. Yeah. <laughs> and also everyone just going, fuck Kyle. It's like, man. <laughs> I mean, I, at one point I was going, it's like, Kyle doesn't. No, wait, Kyle does deserve that. He's a dirty-ass cop, just like the rest of them. So, yeah. Shut fuck the Kyle. fuck up, Kyle. <laughs> we all have a Kyle in our lives. No, also, and I'm ashamed that this one did not occur to me until you mentioned it later. But the bit where um, Renfield's, like, trying to live his life away from Dracula and is, like, kind of getting his shit together. And then Dracula finds out what he's been up to. So Dracula actually, like, surprises Renfield in his new apartment. And he's just sitting there. It's like, Renfield, please come in. Welcome. Make yourself at home. And Renfield just looks down and his doormat says, make, welcome, make yourself at home. He just goes, shit. And the reason why this is funny... (laughs) Is because I started laughing because up until then, the fact that vampires had to be invited into a place hadn't occurred to me. So I'm laughing because of that, because it's like, oh yeah, right, how did he, oh, that's how, okay, that's really (laughs) funny, I didn't even think about that. And Greg's laughing too. And then, later on, Dracula crashes the codependent abusive relationship meetings that Redfield sits in on, and the guy running it ends up inviting him in. And Renfield is horrified by that, and it finally hit me, because that was in the trailers, and it finally hit me, oh, right, Dracula needed them to invite him in, because otherwise he can't go in. And I'm whispering that to Greg, and Greg just goes, oh, that's right, they have to be invited. And I just go, wait, but you were laughing at the welcome mat. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I'm laughing at the welcome mat, because the way Renfield said it was, it's just the way he said, shit, was like, oh, he's fucked. <laughs> he is mega fucked. So the and... fact that that joke hit both of us way too late at different times in different ways is, to me, pretty fucking amazing. Yes, and then just the realization of that, and also when he goes like, holy shit, that is an excellent joke. That is like a, a brilliant fucking joke. Well done, writers. <laughs> oh, God. yeah. Like Dracula's that. death is just fucking great. Oh, everything about that was amazing, especially Renfield's, like, narration over it, and he's like, now, I know what this looks a little extreme, and maybe kind of fun. Like, he's trying to justify, he's like, no, dude. <laughs> but there's so the many sh- different ways to kill a vampire that we got it a little mixed up, and frankly, <laughs> I've seen him come back from some crazy shit. Yeah, and it's like, and it's like, it's at one point, it's like, okay, some of these people believe, you know, Aquafina takes... Takes Schwartz's guns and just starts shooting Dracula's corpse, and it's just like, yeah, keep telling yourself that, bro. <laughs> You're Strictly just like pragmatic, of course. Yeah, and it's like, and but at the same time, I'm going. It's like, you know what? If I was in that situation, I would probably do that too. Because how many times in your life are you going to get the opportunity to murder the fuck out of Dracula with zero consequences? <laughs> yeah, he went out like a boss too when they asked him if he had any last words. I mm-hmm. wish to spend a season in hell, where all the interesting people are. Mm-hmm. Hell, Satan! <laughs> and he's just doing the devil horns with his hands? <laughs> and again, just, just, uh, just, again, Nick Cage just stealing the show. It's like, nope, nope, y'all don't get to forget about me. <laughs> no, of course not. He's so good. He's so, he's such a prick. He is a he is a narc. He takes narcissism to levels that I don't think I've ever seen in movies before, and that's amazing. <laughs> okay, little tiny thing from the start of the movie that I really liked. Mm-hmm. When Renfield is taking down what's his name, Mitch, I Caitlin's so. abuse, yeah, Caitlin's yeah. abuse of uh, X, and he just goes, "I'm a friend of Caitlin's." But when 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 they're Trying to intimidate him, and he starts laughing. He's basically doing the Renfield laugh from the original Dracula, which is mm. in the movie a very unnerving. <laughs> and it's almost a sob, but in his case, it's. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a send up to that, but it's done a little bit differently in a different context, and I like that a lot. Yeah. No, no, I don't know. I I know I'm forgetting shit, 
but man, I I am also blinking very hard right now. Oh, also, I will say the um, I guess the only other thing was the corrupt cops, or at least the leader of the corrupt cops, giving their just desserts, and I was like, oh yeah, Thank you. yeah, especially since like her. Aquafina's captain at one point when he realizes the shit show that he has gotten involved in. He's like, no, man, I'm out. I've like, have fun with this or whatever. And then, hey, man, who the hell are you? And then he dies and the head just rolls in. And I'm no, just like, he was talking shit about Teddy. And then he turns the corner and runs into, oh, hey, man, we were just talking about you. And then he gets his head cut off. Yeah. And I was just like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, he had it coming. I feel yeah, like yeah. going back to what I said about you being right about Aquafina's plot being mm-hmm. necessary. They really needed to set up that all the cops are corrupt, so that way you don't feel bad about Renfield massacring his way through them. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I think that's one of those things where it's like, it's kind of dumb. I feel like objectively it's kind of dumb, but I feel like that's also why they ham up so hard. Where it's like, he's, do- it's like, I literally caught him, like, caught him committing crimes. It's like, he drove through a DUI checkpoint and started throwing cocaine at her. He's like, I have a prescription for this! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if it hadn't been for the fact that all the cops are corrupt, that's the part that would have been minus points. Because, like, no, this is fucking stupid that you're going to let him walk and talk about the bigger picture and shit. It's like, bitch! Yeah. <laughs> also, minor note for me as a car person. Did very much enjoy that in a in a movie about, like, demons and vampires and all that, Teddy's fucking car and the car that Renfield and, and um... Rebecca later used to infiltrate the mob boss's uh, house is a is a Dodge Challenger demon. Like I was like, it's like there's only it's like I saw the car and I was like, there's only a handful of people that I think really would appreciate this choice of car, and I'm one of them. So You'll well never done. guess what this car is called. It's a devil. <laughs> or it's pronounced Deville. It is a coupe. Oh um, my god. <laughs> But is it a little do scoop? Uh, you don't know what I got. No, but I mean, it 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 lo- it has so much power it'll probably make people drop a deuce. Wow, <laughs> like Teddy. <laughs> no, please do not encourage that god awful joke. <laughs> uh, I can't believe. I'm just saying, that. Renfield literally kicked the shit out of him. That's true. <laughs> Man, I am disappointed in myself for saying that. I'm going to be real. <laughs> nah, you shouldn't be. That was pretty damn funny. <laughs> Homie does literally get the shit kicked out of him, by the way. That's not a joke. <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty great. Part of my internal like canon will always go that the bit in the beginning where the Nicholases are in original 1931 Dracula, I feel like that was Nicolas Cage going, you have to do this. <laughs> I want to be Dracula. I want to actually be Dracula. Yeah, it's like, you have to put us in the original movie, guys. I want to be, be Bella great. Lugosi. It'll be great. <laughs> and it was great, to, to yeah. their credit. <laughs> so yeah, definitely, it's it's worth a watch. Like, it's nothing life-changing. It's certainly not the best comedy I've ever seen. But I mean, for a comedy about Dracula, it's... Well, for a comedy about Renfield featuring Dracula... Yeah. It's it's pretty damn funny. I am. Oh, you're Renfield's boss! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've seen things that man was not meant to see. Mm. We know things that cannot be unknown. <laughs> oh, actually, one one other bit, blasting for me, is the hint at their re- being... Because at, at certain points in the movie, Dracula kills um, the support group that Renfield was visiting, and he also kills Rebecca's sister. And in the movie, Rebecca and Renfield have scavenged a good bit of Dracula's blood, and they've used that to revive everyone. Because that's do, how it works in this. Th- that's how it works in this. I do like the implication of there being consequences for that when um, the leader of the support group at the end goes, like, thank you for bringing us back to life, despite us, you know, seeing things that we can never unsee, and knowing things we can never unknow. So anyway... <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, no, no, I actually want to stay on this thread for a little bit. What are the consequences of doing that? I would genuinely love... To, it's like, uh, it's always that kind of shit in movies that gets me. Or like those like weird-ass little details that like don't mean anything. But I'm like, no, please, tell me more about this. It's why, It's literally the only reason I like the, the prequel tri- um, trilogy of Star Wars. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was just like, no, please go over the consequences of this. But yeah, that was that that was the last bit for me. <laughs> All right.
Well, with that being done, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Thank you very much. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, Spotify, TikTok, Twitter, where apparently I get followed by produ- well, not followed, but I get replied to by producers occasionally. <laughs> hey, maybe it's a sign of something greater. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Next week, uh, so I'm really hoping Bo is Afraid comes out in a wide release near us, so that way I can go see that. Mm-hmm. And I assume, if it comes down to it, Greg is probably going to see Chevalier. Yeah, probably. Because if I can't see Bo is Afraid, I'm probably going to watch Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, no, that... I have a really hard time just watching the trailer for that. Not because it yeah. looks bad, but because it just looks uncomfortably gory. Yeah, no. Just a glass-swallowing bit. <laughs> yeah. But that's a next week problem. And by Indeed. next week, I mean this weekend. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. This has been Under the Bridge with Cody, a.k.a. the Scarlet Troll. And with Greg, a.k.a. Greg. And we will catch you guys next week. But for now, enjoy Dracula Week while it lasts. Adios, amigos.